Have you ever felt a quiet whisper inside, a sudden knowing, guiding you without logic or evidence? A hunch? A gut feeling? A voice that speaks without words? What if I told you that this inner voice, your intuition, is not random nor mystical, but a profound biological intelligence rooted in your brain? The voice inside you that speaks without sound. It whispers in stillness nudges you in quiet moments, guiding you toward paths your rational mind can't yet see. This is intuition, not fantasy, not chance, but a deep intelligence rooted in your biology and beyond it. Today, we explore how your inner voice works, scientifically and spiritually, and how to strengthen this sacred sense to live a life of clarity, alignment, and profound purpose. Today, we explore the neuroscience of intuition, what it is, how it works, and how you can harness it to make wiser choices and live more intentionally. We often dismiss intuition as mere emotion, but it's not. It's a fast, complex mental process rooted in non-conscious pattern recognition. Your brain has absorbed years, decades of sensory data, memories, and subtle emotional signals. Intuition is the distilled essence of that wisdom. In Hermeticism, it is said, as within, so without, as above, so below, as the universe, so the soul. Your inner voice is the divine mind echoing within your human vessel. In the Bible, God's voice comes not in thunder, but as a still small voice. 1 Kings 19.12 Neville Goddard taught that your imagination is divine. Intuition, then, is your direct line to the I am within, spirit whispering through your subconscious. Today, we'll bridge neuroscience and spirit, exploring ancient teachings and modern research in neuroplasticity and motivational psychology. So let's begin. Part 1. The Power of Intuition. We live in a world that praises the rational mind. From childhood, we are taught to analyze, to compare, to calculate. We equate intelligence with facts, data, and reasoning. And yes, there is value in logic. It gives structure to our thoughts and helps us navigate complexity. But there is another kind of intelligence, more subtle, more fluid. An intelligence that doesn't speak in words or numbers, but in feeling, in sensation, in a quiet certainty that arises before thought even begins. This is intuition. It's not loud. It doesn't debate. It doesn't ask for permission. It simply knows, and what it knows is not random. It is the product of a deeply layered process. Where your brain draws upon vast networks of stored memories emotional associations, past experiences, and learned patterns. In neuroscience, we call this implicit memory, a type of knowing that operates beneath conscious awareness. It's the system that lets a pianist's fingers move without thinking. That allows you to sense the mood in a room without a single word spoken. That warns you about a person before you even understand why. Your intuition arises from a super-fast, non-verbal form of intelligence, where your subconscious pulls together millions of neural impressions and delivers the answer not as a sentence, but as a sensation. A feeling in the chest, a quiet nudge in the gut, a resonance or resistance in the body. It's not guesswork, it's wisdom, compressed into a moment. But intuition is more than just a neurological function. It reaches beyond the mind. Because sometimes, the knowing you feel doesn't come from your personal experience. It feels older than that, wider than that. It doesn't just feel like you remembering. It feels like truth remembering itself through you. That's why intuition feels so different from thought. Thought tries to convince. But intuition doesn't need to. 
It doesn't argue because it already knows. It is clarity without noise. Knowing without evidence. Direction without a map. It is the soul's whisper in a language the mind cannot fully grasp, but the heart understands completely. So when that inner voice rises, when that sensation arrives, when that quiet yes or no moves through you, pause, because you're not just feeling, you're receiving, and what you're receiving is the truth of your being surfacing through the stillness. Part 2. Cultivating Inner Listening The question isn't whether you possess intuition. You do. Everyone does. The real question is, have you learned how to listen to it? Because intuition is always speaking. It's just that most of us are too distracted, too noisy, too externally focused to hear it. This inner voice doesn't compete for your attention. It doesn't shout over the mind's chatter. It waits, patiently, silently, until you slow down enough to feel it. To hear your intuition, you don't need to force anything. You simply need to create space. You don't search for the voice within. You receive it. Let's explore three ways to cultivate this sacred inner listening. First, stillness the gateway to inner clarity. In a world addicted to movement, stillness becomes a portal to the invisible. When you sit in stillness, you step outside the linear stream of thoughts. You stop chasing answers and begin receiving insights. Not from outside, but from within. This is not about emptying the mind. It's about softening your identification with it so that something deeper can emerge. Stillness is not a passive state. It is receptive power. It's where the noise of the surface settles and the wisdom of the depths rises. With consistent practice, meditation becomes more than a technique. It becomes a tuning process. You are not just calming the mind. You are aligning with a deeper frequency of truth, one that already lives within you. Second, inner attention, reading the language of the body. Your body is an instrument of intuition. It speaks in sensation far more honestly than the mind ever will. Start noticing what your body does in the presence of certain people, ideas, or decisions. Do your shoulders tighten or release? Does your breath become shallow or full? Do you feel expansion? or contraction. These subtle cues are not coincidences. They are intelligence. Your body is a finely tuned antenna, picking up energetic information long before your rational mind catches on. This is inner attention, becoming fluent in the language of sensation. It's how your nervous system delivers messages from realms your intellect can't yet see. And when you begin to trust those cues, you unlock a new layer of self-guidance, one that is always true, always immediate. Third, writing without thinking, letting wisdom flow through you. There is something sacred about putting pen to paper. When you ask a question with sincerity and allow yourself to write freely, without editing, without overthinking, something remarkable happens. You bypass the gatekeeper of logic. You enter a stream of awareness that doesn't come from memory or opinion. It comes from pure presence. The words that emerge may surprise you. They may feel wiser than your ordinary thoughts. That's because they often are. This practice isn't about being poetic or profound. It's about surrender, allowing what lives in your deeper self to come forward unfiltered. Over time, intuitive writing becomes a ritual of revelation, a private dialogue with your higher intelligence. And here is the paradox of inner listening. The more you practice, the clearer the voice becomes. Not because it grows louder, but because you grow quieter. 
The chatter of fear and doubt fades. The noise of outside opinions softens. And what remains is you. Whole, aware, guided. Part 3. Intuition in Action We've been conditioned to believe that the best decisions are the most calculated. Measured in data, analyzed from every angle, verified by logic, and approved by consensus. We're taught that clarity is the result of thinking harder. That certainty comes from having enough facts, and that the intellect is the only trustworthy guide. Should you make decisions based on intuition or logic? The answer is both. Neuroscientist Antonio Damasio found that people with damage to emotional centers of the brain, who could not access feelings, struggled to make even the simplest decisions. Why? Because emotion and intuition give weight to reason. They provide context, meaning. Great leaders, creatives, entrepreneurs, they all trust their instincts, they analyze, but they also feel. Steve Jobs once said, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. And here's the truth. Some of the most important decisions in life don't come through thinking. They arrive quietly, before the analysis, before the spreadsheets, before the pros and cons lists. You walk into a space and immediately feel something is off. You meet someone and sense a connection you can't explain. You're offered a golden opportunity and something deep within you whispers, no, there's no debate, no evidence. Just a knowing, a soft, solid clarity that doesn't ask to be proven. That is not fear, that is not emotion, that is intuition in action. Intuition doesn't need to persuade, it doesn't argue with your logic. It simply reveals. It presents the answer in the space before thought, in the breath before reason. It feels like peace, or a tightness in the chest or an inexplicable lightness in the body. It is clarity without justification, direction without explanation. And this is where many struggle. Because we've been taught to distrust what we can't explain, to dismiss what cannot be calculated. But intuition doesn't exist to be explained. It exists to be followed. You see, intuition doesn't always lead you to what is obviously smart. It leads you to what is true. It may ask you to walk away from something everyone else says is a great opportunity. It may guide you toward the unknown while your mind clings to what feels safe. But intuition is not concerned with comfort. It is aligned with truth, your deepest alignment, your inner compass, your soul's unfolding. So yes, logic may tell you what is likely to work but intuition tells you what is yours to do. It's not interested in strategy. It's interested in authenticity. It doesn't optimize outcomes. It honors alignment. And when you act from that place, you're not just making a good decision. You're making a decision that resonates through every level of your being. When you begin trusting your intuition, something subtle but powerful shifts. You stop over explaining yourself. You stop seeking validation for your path. You stop needing guarantees before you move. And in that shift, you begin living from the inside out. Guided not by fear or pressure, but by resonance, by inner clarity, by an invisible harmony between your choices and your essence. And here's the beauty. When your decisions arise from that level of integrity, life begins to respond in kind. Doors open that logic could never predict. Timing aligns in ways no plan could orchestrate. People show up, paths clear, synchronicities appear. Because your outer world begins to mirror your inner truth. This is the quiet power of intuition in action. It doesn't make life easier. It makes life truer. And in a world flooded with noise, that kind of truth is revolutionary. Part 4. Trusting the Unknown The mind craves certainty. It wants to know, 
to prove, to predict. But intuition asks you to trust without proof, to walk before you see the entire path, to say yes to something that only your heart understands. This is the most sacred kind of intelligence, not based on outcomes, but on alignment. When you trust your inner voice, you don't avoid uncertainty. You embrace it. You stop resisting life and start dancing with it. You realize that your intuition is not leading you to control. It's leading you to truth. And that truth lives inside you, always. A life guided by intuition is a life guided by trust. Not in what you see, but in what you feel, deeply and quietly. To live this way is to embrace mystery, to walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5.7 Hermes Trismegistus called the unknown the all, a field of unlimited potential. To live intuitively is to live in alignment with the mind of the all, the divine matrix behind appearances. Your intuition is the compass, and God is the map maker. Your intuition is not fantasy. It is the sacred mind speaking softly, the bridge between your humanity and your divinity. Trust it, develop it, and remember, you are never alone. For the voice within is the voice of the infinite. Your inner voice is the divine mind whispering. Trust it.